Hello good day viewers. In this tutorial we are only going to find the cube root of negative 8. We know that in the set of real numbers the cube root of negative 8 is just negative 2. Why? Because we know that we can express negative 8 as negative 2 to the power of 3. So this can be written as the cube root of negative 2 to the power of 3. And this will simply take care of this leaving only negative 2 and hence negative 2 is said to be the cube root of negative 8 but we know that we could obtain other solutions in the set of complex numbers so in this tutorial i'll be showing you two different ways to do that let's start with the first method in the first method i would like to let the whole of this to be equal to z so let z be equal to the cube root of negative 8. Now let us cube both sides. Raise this to the power of 3 and raise this to the power of 3 such that this will cancel this. You can see that z to the third power will be equal to just negative 8. And we can now bring this negative 8 inside. z to the third power, as this crosses over, it becomes positive 8. But I know that 8 can be written as 2 to the power of 3, so I can confidently write it as 2 to the power of 3. Remember, we have nothing to the other side. And this is nothing but sum of two cubes. If you have a to the third power plus b to the third power, this can be factorized as a plus b multiplied by a squared. That is the first term, squared. Then minus a times b without exponents, a times b, then plus b squared as simple as that so we can apply the same principle here so our a is z here and b is 2 they correspond so this becomes z plus 2 right multiplied by z squared minus z times 2 that is 2z as you multiply z by 2 you have 2 z then second term that is 2 squared is 4. remember to set the whole of this to be 0. now we have two factors either this one equal to 0 or this one let's set each of them to be 0. z plus 2 is either 0 or z squared minus 2z plus 4 equals 0. We have confidence here that z must be negative 2. So z equals negative 2. This is one of the solutions. And we could obtain other solutions here from this quadratic equation which is expressed in terms of z. Okay, we are going to use the general formula, but let's write the data. The leading coefficient a is 1 here. b is negative 2. And c is equal to 4. So the formula we are going to apply is z equals minus b plus or minus into square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 multiplied by a. So we are going to substitute these terms into this equation. So from here we can see that z is equal to minus b. b is minus 2. If you negate it, it becomes 2 positive plus or minus into the square root of b squared that is negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a times c 4 times a that is 4 times 1 is 4 times c which is 4 4 times 4 is 16 so we have 16 here divide by 2 times a meaning 2 times 1 is 2 Okay, we know that 4 minus 16 is negative 12, so this becomes 2 plus or minus negative 12 divided by 2. But we know that negative 12 can be expressed as 4 times negative 3, something like this. 4 times negative 3, which you can split differently because square root of 4 is 2. So this is the same thing as 2 times the square root of uh, negative 3, which can be written as root 3i so the whole of square of negative 12 is the same thing as 2 root 3i so we have 2 plus or minus 2 root 3i divided by 2 
we have common factor of two so they will all cancel by this two leaving um one plus root three i plus or minus sorry so we have two solutions z is either one plus root three i or z equals one minus root three i remember we have another solution here z equal to negative two you can bring it down here so we have three solutions for the cube root each and every value here you raise to the power of three it must give you negative eight you can try it well let me show you another way you can solve this problem easier and faster all right the second method i know that negative eight is the same thing as eight multiplied by negative one so this cube root of negative eight i know it can be written as cube root of eight multiplied by negative one and we know from rules of sort we can split them as well so i can write this as um, cube root of eight times cube root of negative one we know that cube root of eight is two so this is equal to two multiplied by um Cube root of negative 1 can be written as negative 1 raised to the power of 1 over 3. It's all the same. And I know that from um, complex number, I can write negative 1 as negative 1 plus 0i, where the imaginary part is absent. This is why it is missing here. It is 0 raised to the power of 1 over 3. Then we are going to transform negative 1 plus 0i into its polar form. Remember, if you have a unit cycle where the radius is 1, this is where we have uh, negative 1. This is where we have positive 1. We have 1 here. We have negative 1 here. And this angle here is pi. I remember that cosine of pi is what? Negative 1. And sine of pi is equal to zero which means we can replace negative one with cosine pi and replace zero with what sine of pi so this becomes cosine of pi plus i times sine of pi but wait the moment you add a complete cycle complete re revolution you're still going to come back to this leg and it will give you the same solution hence we can add multiples of 2 pi. So cosine of pi plus other multiples of 2 pi. You can multiply by k for which k is just an integer. This will still give you negative 1. The same thing for sine. Sine of pi plus multiples of this 2 pi. It will give you 0. So instead, we can replace negative 1 with this and 0 with this one. So let's do that. So this is equal to cosine. Okay, we have two, right? Two multiplied by, let me use this bracket. Cosine of pi plus multiples of two pi. Then plus i times sine of multiples of a pi plus multiples of 2 pi. Can you see that? As simple as that. But don't forget to raise it to the power of 1 over 3, which is this one. So let me get rid of all of this. Okay. According to the Mobile theorem, we can take this exponent and multiply by these arguments. So let's do that. This is equal to 2 multiplied by cosine of pi plus 2 pi k multiplied by this is the same thing as dividing by 3 so we have pi plus 2 pi k divided by 3 then plus i the same thing sine of pi plus 2 pi k divided by 3 we are done with that expansion all right, so how can we obtain these three solutions? We are going to substitute k equal to 0, k equal to 1, and k equal to 2, and we are done. Let me start with the first one. 
when k equal to zero just look at it when k is equal to zero remember that this is z don't forget when k is equal to zero we have zero times two pi is zero is still zero plus pi is pi then we have only pi divided by three here so what is cosine of pi divided by three is one divided by two but don't forget about this two so we have two times one over two still we have pi over three here so um, sine of pi over three will be positive root three divided by two but we still have an i here just multiply it here if you multiply through by this two two times half is one plus this two will still cancel this one leaving only root three then i this is our first solution second solution that is when k is equal to one when k is equal to one we have one times two pi that will give us two pi plus pi that is three pi divide by three we just have pi so what is cosine of pi is negative one don't forget this two so z will be equal to two times uh, negative one then plus the same thing here we have um pi right sine of pi is zero i zero times i is zero plus negative one is still negative one then times two that will give us negative two second solution then the third solution is when k is equal to two when k is equal to two we have two times two pi that will give us four pi plus another pi that is five pi divided by three what is cosine of 5 pi divided by 3 that will give us 1 over 2 so z is equal to, don't forget about this two outside we have 1 over 2 the same thing 5 pi over 3 sine of that will give us negative root 3 divided by 2 don't forget your i if you expand all these fractions will go z will be just 1 minus root 3 i can you see that we have three solutions one two three using um trigonometric ratios thank you for watching do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel for more exciting videos bye bye